Today, you and I are going to assemble an Estes model rocket. Welcome to Hacker Week. So, Estes rockets have been in my life since I was a kid. My older brother brought one home when I was probably nine years old. Uh, he had built it in science class, was learning about the physics of rocket propulsion, and in 1972, in fifth grade, I got my turn to build some rockets. One of them was a Big Bertha. I painted it orange, it went up beautifully, it came down parachute open and almost landed in a nearby river, but at the last minute an updraft saved it. Vernon Estes founded Estes Rockets in 1958 because rockets were very popular then. Hobbyists were trying to build their own some people got badly injured making them out of matchstick heads inside of a pipe. Essentially, they were building a pipe bomb. I remember reading some of the horror stories and warnings about don't try building your own rocket at home. Buy one of these. They're safe. The engines are safe. And you can learn about rocketry. And that I did. So today, we're going to build a Big Bertha. I'm going to take you through it step by step. And if you're interested in getting one of these rockets, you can check the link below in the video description that will take you right to an Estes page where you can buy some rockets just in time for Christmas. Let's get started. All right, we've got the overhead camera working today and we're gonna build this kit just like this. You're gonna get to see everything going on right from an overhead view. There are five levels of kits available from Estes. There's the beginner, intermediate, advanced, expert, and master. This one is an intermediate. It's not that hard to build. If it's the very first time, I would suggest you start with a beginner and work your way up. But I think, in my opinion, a beginner person that's done a little bit of model building and tinkering on a workbench could easily build this rocket. The length is 24 inches, uh, 1.64 inches in diameter, of course a parachute recovery. Enough of that, let's get this out of the bag and see what we have here. The neat thing about the Big Bertha is it's got a large body tube. When you're done you have a pretty substantial rocket that you can launch and admire. There is a full one year warranty which basically covers any defects in manufacture. Estes kits are pretty high quality. I don't think I've ever encountered any major issues in the time I have built them. We've got a full instruction set here, really easy to read. It's all uh, done in a lot of pictures and it's all step by step. It tells you just exactly how to build everything and that is exactly what we're gonna do. We're gonna follow everything totally step by step. There's a nice picture we have for reference of a paint job you can do, but you can do whatever paint job you like. Let's go ahead and set that aside. Let's open up the package and see what else we have inside. We have pre-cut balsa fins. You used to have to cut them out yourself from a template. Estes has made it a bit easier now with laser cut parts. Very nice. And the balsa is uh, actually really good quality. It's getting harder and harder to find balsa wood anymore. And um, their selection of it is pretty top notch. So we've got decals too, which is really cool. My original one did not come with decals. This is a launch lug. These are parts for the engine mount, parachute, shock cord, and some other goodies. Let's get to the instructions and get started. First, let's take a look at what tools and supplies you will need. Scissors, a pencil, a ruler, some sandpaper, carpenter's glue, also known as wood glue. You can use super glue if you like, uh, a good hobby knife, masking tape, and then the paint of your choice should you choose to paint it. I like to work with everything laid out right here up in front of me and do my work right here follow along on the instructions. So the first step is the engine mount. So we're going to put that all together. Mark on the engine mount tube a couple of lines. Here you can see how it's laid out where you've got to measure up a half inch from the bottom and then an inch and a quarter up from the bottom and two and a half inches up from the bottom and then you get those marks and then we are going to make a perforation there with a knife and then all of the other bits and bobs that go on 
to make an engine mount. When we're all done, this will be the part that slides up into the body tube and holds the engine in place. Next line is one and one quarter inches up from the bottom, right here. And the third line is two and a half inches up from the bottom. Now we can mount the engine retainer. This is a metal strip that has some nifty little bends in it. What it does is it mounts to this tube. The engine slides up in here and the bottom of the engine will catch on this little bend right here. The reason it does that is when the thrust of the rocket burn is over with, there is a charge that blows off that way uh, and it releases gases which push out the parachute. So the engine needs something to push against. If it didn't have that, it would just shoot out the back of the rocket and we would not have a parachute deploy, which is a bad thing. So we've got to cut a little slot now in this uppermost line right here, just about an eighth of an inch wide with an exacto. Now we're going to put the retainer in place. And a little thing I like to do is take a, uh, a piece of right angle stock aluminum. You can also use the edge of a door frame in your house and just hold this up against it the same way I'm doing right here. And I'm going to put a line on there just for reference so that I get that retainer nice and straight. It's just a reference line. And I'll push this in right here. This little tab up here pushes in. And there we go. Now that's mounted. Now we're going to mount the retaining ring over the whole tube, capturing the retaining wire. We need to put a little bit of glue right around this spot where the second line is. Just spread that out a tiny bit with my finger. And we're going to take the retaining ring. We're going to slide that on there. We'll make sure that that is sitting nice and straight. And then we'll wipe off the excess. Next up, we mount the thrust ring, D. This green ring is going to mount just inside the end of the tube. We just want to push it in where it's flush with the end of the tube. So again, a little bit of glue is going to go in the end of this. Um, I just put a little bit around the entire perimeter. Just want to have a nice little bead of it all the way around. And then something I have found I like to do is put just a little bit on the ring itself too. It's good to have this mounted in there really solid because all of the thrust of the rocket engine is going to push against this ring. So you want to make sure it's glued in well. So now we're just going to push that in. Just twist a little as we push it in. And that's it. Just push it in where it's flush with the end. Let me get you a good close-up look at that. See how it's in there? These are the laser cut spacer rings that are for the engine mount. So we could call them the engine mount rings. And the outside diameter of these is the same as the inside diameter of the tube. So we'll punch these out. They're made of really dense cardboard. You see one has that little notch that's for the engine retainer wire and we're going to glue those on here now. So remember that first line we made a half inch up from the bottom. That's where the ring with the notch in it is going to go. It's going to slide on to that point. The other ring is going to go on the end and just be flush with the end. So let's once again get out the glue what we're after is making it look like this. So the first one I'm going to do is the one down here. Now the one with the notch in it slides on there. It's going to be a pretty snug fit. Sometimes it's easier to do it like this. Just work your way around till you get it to slide. We're going to slide it up to that line. As long as you're close to the line, that's good. It doesn't have to be perfect, perfect. It's mostly a guide for you. 
and you can just rotate it and make sure you have it even all the way around. And then I'm going to take my finger and just smear this glue around here until I have a nice fillet of glue. That nice little bit of glue there all the way around is called a fillet. It makes for a nice little radius of glue. I'm going to put a little more on this side now. And we're going to put that all the way around. Same thing, we're going to just wipe my finger around it. And that one is now done. All right, similar procedure. We're going to put glue all the way around the outside. And then slide the ring on. Now this one, I'm going to put on just a little bit past the end. I'm going to wipe that bit of glue into a nice fillet. And then on this side, I'm going to put a little more glue around it. And we'll just kind of wipe the whole thing for a nice clean amount of glue. And you can see what I've done there. There's a little bit of glue all the way around the thrust ring now, a little extra. And now that comprises the entire engine mount assembly. This is going to be ready to slide into the base of the tube as soon as it dries. So let's let this sit and dry for a few hours. First thing we want to do with the fins is give them a bit of a sanding. I'm going to put down a piece of wood here because I've got this kind of soft carpeted bench. I've got a little sanding block. You can make one yourself. Don't just try to do it by hand, it's best with a block. That way you get a nice flat surface. I'm gonna make sure that this is actually over the block. And I'm just gonna move back and forth a few times with the grain, just to smooth things out a bit. Gonna do both sides, whoops. Okay. Now we can take an X-Acto blade and just gently run around here, following the line, because there's some little places where the laser skips cutting. That way they stay retained in the larger piece of wood. There you go. And I have four fins cut out and some scrap balsa. And I always, always save my scrap balsa. You never know when it might come in handy. And if you want to scratch build a rocket, there's plenty of area on here. You can cut out your own fins of your own design. So what is the leading edge? Well, if we were looking at the tube with the fin mounted on it, these are flat across the bottom. That is the leading edge right there. We're just gonna take the sanding block and just do a rounded leading edge like this. And as you get to where you're finishing it, if you do this kind of a rounded stroke, and you can see on the burn mark from the laser cutter, right there where my pencil is pointing, see that little bit of a roundedness? That's what we want, just a nice rounded edge. Once you've got the leading edge, with a nice radius, you can go for all of the other edges and get rid of that little spur that was there that held it into the larger piece of balsa. And I like to just give it a quick chamfer and a slight radius just to make it look a little better. Now the inside edge, the root edge that goes against the body I don't want to radius that at all. All I want to do is just give it a quick sand like that. And I want to make sure that that little spur is gone. And that's it. All sanded and smooth. Now, if you wanted to, you could put a sanding sealer on these and keep working and working to get them nice and smooth. That way the grain won't show up when you paint it. In this build, we're just going to go ahead and paint them just like they are. Next, we're gonna cut out this template. It serves two purposes. It will tell you where the fins are going to go. It's a template. We're gonna put that around the body tube and use it to mark where the fins go. And then the inner part of it is the retainer for the shock cord for the parachute. 
we need to cut that part out. It is located on another part of the instructions right there. However, on the other side of that are instructions of how to attach the fins. If you have a copier, you can just scan and copy that and use it that way. But you may want to go over to the other side, take a quick look at this section. It's how to glue the fins on and the lines will already be there. You're going to glue them on at 90 degree angles and let it dry. But right now we're going to go back and cut this template out. So what I'm going to do now is put a little piece of tape here on one end and I'm going to roll this thing around the body tube a little bit away from the end. Just wrap it around like that and we're going to pull it as tight as we can get it. So what we'll do now is mark on the tube right there where it says FL that stands for fin line. I'm going to put a pencil mark there and one there and one for every single one of the four fins. So the casing around the outside of a door can also use uh, that. Mm -hmm. Now we need to mark these lines and they need to be parallel with the length of the tube. I have a piece of angle uh, aluminum stock that I use for it and when you put it on here it will just tend to automatically line up parallel with the tube. More steps to check off. You can see right there is the door frame that I was talking about. That's another way you can mark your fin lines. I've got the lines marked. Now we can move on to the engine mount installation. We need to put some glue up inside the tube, two inches in, a nice bead of it, spread it around there on the inside. Then we're going to shove the engine mount up in there. It's going to push against that glue and make a little bead of it right around here. And then we have the one on the bottom that's going to go in and we'll glue that after it's put in with a little extra glue. Put it up into the tube and I'm going to watch inside and just get a nice bead of glue all the way around in there. Now I'm going to take the Q-tip that's marked at two inches and I can use that as my guide to make sure I don't put it too far in there. I'm just going to smear the glue around in there and I like to get a little bit of a primer of glue on here too just because if it's on there already it just helps the bond that much more because it's already on the cardboard and kind of pushed into the pores of the cardboard. And another little trick I like to do a little bit down here as well on this side, on the inboard side. For the same reasons, and there's a little bit already there. Now we're going to push this in. We want to make sure that we line up this retainer, the engine retainer, with the line where the launch lug goes, which is right there. So I'm going to push this in there. I can feel it hitting the glue. Now that that is in, this is a trick I do. I'm going to put a little bead of glue around the body right now with the engine mount in there. This is my way of getting a little extra insurance that the bottom retainer ring is also going to be well attached. Now I can push this in the rest of the way, making sure it's lined up with where the launch lug goes. And I'm going to push it in till the engine tube is even with the bottom of the body. There we go. Lastly, a little bit of glue on this side. And now we're gonna let that dry and we can check those things off our list on the instructions. Remember that template we cut out? Well, now we can put that back in place for reference if you want. The next step is gluing the fins to the body. They need to be 
perfectly straight and they need to be spaced 90 degrees apart. There's a few ways to do that. You could put them right on the line with some wood glue and use some tape held over the top to hold them in place. I have done that in the past. You can also use a fin jig. Estes makes one that just goes right around the body tube and it's got little slots in it and you can adjust it. You can use it for four fins or three fins. It's available on the Estes website. Just check out that link in the video description. You can also make one under a 3D printer like I did here. And this just contours right to this body tube size. And what I do is I get a little bit of CA glue on the fin. Um, I use this stuff, AK Fix 705, along with the spray kicker. And I can just get it lined up using this, get the fin on there, hit it with the kicker, that sets it in place. Then I come back with the wood glue, put a nice fillet in and let it dry. There are some templates available on Thingiverse if you choose to go there, or like I said, you can go to the Estes website and buy one. After this thing dries a little more and the motor mount is set, we'll get the fins mounted to the body. Before we get doing the fins, I wanted to show you the way I used to do it a long time ago. Pretty much tape like this. And then you just kind of put it on your reference line, make sure you get it really straight. And then you just pretty much eyeball it. And then you'd move the tape around until you got it where it looked perfectly perpendicular to the tube, which is tricky. But that's the way we used to do it and now we're going to do it differently that's a lot more accurate and much easier this could get pretty tedious right then let's get on with it so the first thing i do is put a very small bead of glue on the root edge of the fin very little doesn't take very much all i'm after here is something to tack it to the body and then the bulk of the strength is going to be on the wood glue that i put on later so there's my little bit of glue. I'm going to get the fin jig in place and I'm going to line it up along the edge of that line with the edge of the fin. And drop it in there. Make sure that this back line lines up okay. And once I get it where I like it, push it against the body. I'm going to squeeze this to hold the fin and that way it's going to make sure that it aligns to everything nice and parallel. Then we take some of the kicker, give it a quick shot, and I can release this. And there we go, all glued on, nice and straight. So now we can add wood glue fillets, and I just use the bottle to help me out with that. I just lay down a nice little bead right here in the corner. And then up here at the tip, I'll use my pinky because it's got a smaller diameter than the rest of my fingers. And just bring that fillet right up around the edge. Clean it up a little bit. And while we're right here, we can do this one. Nice, clean, even fillets. And we'll let it dry sitting upright like this for a while. Then we'll invert it for a while. We'll let it sit like this for a while. And we can check that off the list. The fins are almost dry, dry enough that we can put on the launch lug now. I've got my piece of angle stock aluminum here and I've got a couple of marks on the body tube, one there and one there. That is where the launch lug is going to go. I'm going to use that angle stock as a guide to hold it in place. 
and I'm going to put it a little bit in from the ends of where the tube is going to go just to make sure it doesn't ooze out and plug up the tube. And we're just going to drop it on there. A little bit of kicker. Let that sit for a minute. Then what I'm going to do is put a little fillet of the CA glue on each side of the lug. Referring back to the instructions, there's the launch lug, check that off, and the glue fillets. We did that already, we're going to check that off. Now we can attach the shot cord and we have that piece that we cut out. And we're going to cut out the rest of it now. So as you see in the instructions, the rubber shot cord is going to go inside here like this. We're going to glue it like so to this. And we're going to fold it over again and glue it and then we're going to glue it to inside the body tube. This method has been used for a long time. I'm going to use a little bit of super glue to bond the rubber to this piece right here because it's going to hold it a lot quicker and a lot more secure than the wood glue will. Give it a little kick and then we fold this piece over onto it and we're going to lift that back up now we're going to put a little bit of wood glue in there put a little bit on the paper I'm going to smear that around a bit and we'll fold that over like so And then we put a little more glue on this side. And we'll smear that around, make sure we cover all the paper. And then we're going to fold this piece over right at that perforation mark, right on top of it. And what we want to do is just squeeze the whole thing out really well. Squish it together really good. And you can kind of pre-curve it a little bit for the body tube ahead of time. We need to glue that down inside the body tube an inch and a half reason being is the nose cone needs room to slip in there and not bump into anything so an inch and a half is probably right about to the second joint on your finger down inside there i'm going to get a little bit of glue down into the body tube right about that inch and a half mark i'm just going to put a little gob of it in there take my q-tip and reach in there and smear it around Make sure we cover the same amount of area as our piece of paper that we're going to put in with the shot cord on it. Now I'm going to take that piece of paper and get some glue on it. Smear that around a little. We want to make sure we cover the whole piece of paper. And we get a good solid bond. It's important that this is well bonded in there because this is what takes all of the shock of that nose cone and parachute rocketing out of the end of the tube when the ejection charge goes off on the engine and it makes for a pretty good jolt so you want to make sure that this is really well bonded down inside there so now we can reach down inside and drop this in place. And we'll just reach in there and press that in place. I'll give you a look inside, you can see what I mean. All nice and smooth in there. And we check the shock cord install off our list and move on to the nose cone and the parachute recovery system. So the nose cone has this little section right here where we're going to tie off the parachute and right here it tells you to cut out this little part right here 
what we're after is cutting out this little piece right here. It probably will just pop out. Yes, and that's where we're gonna tie off with the parachute and the shock cord. We're gonna lay this all out. So let's get these untangled. Each one of these is a loop from there to there. Also from here to here. There's one that runs across the middle and then there's two that are on the opposite sides like so. Noisy 3D printer back there. So we're gonna gather all those up. So pardon the 3D printer noise in the background. Um, Thanksgiving is coming up and I'm printing up some turkeys. My wife takes these and puts a little loop on them and makes earrings out of them this time of year. Give them away. They're cute. You can find that on Thingiverse. So there is a line on the parachute that goes from this corner to this corner and then there's two that are here and here that's a loop here and here that one is a loop we're going to gather all of these up and what we're after is to find the middle of everything so we can just take a pencil or something and put it through these lines like so yeah, hello put a little bit of tension on it i'm going to push right in the very center lift up and just let the lines kind of find their own center point. Now let's just go like this and see what we've got. That looks pretty good. As you can see they're all pretty much equal. And now out at this end, I'm going to pull tight on this. We're going to take the loop at this end. And we're going to attach it to the nose cone. What I'm gonna do is pass this loop through this hole in the nose cone, like so. I'm gonna grab all of those lines, keeping them right at that same point. Don't let them slip at all. And I'm gonna get enough slack where I can take the entire chute, push it through that loop, pull it out the other side, sure to always keep your thumb on that same spot as we pull all of this tight. What we're doing here is called a girth hitch. And we're just going to keep pulling, I'll keep everything nice and even. There's a little closer look of what it looks like. So that's the build up to this point. Paint is next, but that goes on for too long for one video. Oh my God, we're at like 30 some minutes already. If you're still here, I'm amazed. You probably cheated and fast forwarded, but whatever. Um, but come back next week, we get after the paint, the whole process of painting and prepping and getting it ready for launch. And we're gonna launch it and it's all gonna be so much fun. But you'll have to wait till then till you can see the painted rocket. Um, till then, yes. So anyway, <clears throat> I hope you liked this video. It had a lot of the basics in it of what it takes to build a model rocket. All the kits follow this basic outline of instructions. You build the motor mount, you put the motor mount into the body tube, you get the fins, etc., etc. And it's just a little different the more detailed the models get. That's about all. So in future videos, you'll hear me reference things um, that we just went over in this video. But anyway, next time is the paint. So be sure to stay tuned for that because um, you just have to wait till then to find out um, what it looks like painted. All right, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and click that Estes link down there. Go buy some rockets, have some fun, be safe. Till next time, nothing to see here.